What's up? It's your boys. It's your boy, the Charm City Champ. And I'm here joined by a special guest, Hinokaga. You know, you know I'm here. We're talking JRPGs today. <laughs> <laughs> big one, so. <laughs> yeah, very big one. So um, I figured, you know, we're all excited. Persona 5 Strikers comes out today as we're talking. And there's a lot of people, and I've, I've seen it uh, probably more so in depth now when I was looking for people to kind of like do this round table with is that a lot of people play Persona 5, but nobody actually spent the 120 or so odd hours to beat Persona 5. <laughs> it's very hard to find people who have beaten it. It actually took me two goals to do it. Yeah, same. So, <laughs> <laughs> so funny for funny story before we get started. But anyway, let me get back to the back to the viewers. This is a Persona Five roundtable recap. We're gonna go in in depth and talk about the big story beats of Persona Five. So that if you are one of those people who did not stick through the entirety of Persona Five and you want to play Strikers, you can watch this two part video and get all cut up, baby. Make sure to like and subscribe, too, while you're there. You know that, that like button down there somewhere? Hit it. <laughs> leave a comment if we get some stuff wrong. Yeah, man. Leave a spicy comment. It's okay. I got or, or Teflon. yelling at me in general. I love it. <laughs> Teflon skin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, if, as far as the reason why I played it twice, so I played Persona 5 at launch. And I'm a very... Uh, cocky gamer i guess like if there's a hard difficulty i'll I pick it okay so i picked hard on persona 5 mistake <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that, that system that system is really like unforgiving it is not friendly at all like even when you're not playing on hard <laughs> but um the one thing that they change in the harder difficulty is like resources are less available so you find you get less money you find less health and stuff like that. So by the time I made it all the way to the final end boss, uh, everybody's MP was drained. I had no like, <laughs> so I'm sitting there. Uh, I'm hitting like y'all the buff like with punches, trying to kill. <laughs> so like, funny, funny thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, on the flip side of that, so like I, I got it pretty close to launch, mm -hmm. and I didn't beat it either. And uh, my problem is, like, I speed run through stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, I know I spent more time doing social stuff than I actually spent in dungeons. And I would just oh, yeah. fly through dungeons like, oh, I see his weakness. Oh, I'm not quite leveled enough to do this. But if I just hit him a bunch of times and it works, like, I'll get through. <laughs> and uh, once you get to the end of the game, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be Persona Five before the anime finishes, and uh, I never did. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Royal came out. I was like, you know, I'll get Royal. I'll try it again, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, finally beat it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't until Royal came back that I finally and Royal made a lot of like quality of life changes too, that oh, made yeah, the game like, easier was, to play. It was, it was a lot. Royal was a lot. I remember it being more fun than playing a regular uh, Persona, mm -hmm. or regular Persona 5. And I really like the aesthetic of Persona 5. And, like, you know, it's real easy to get caught up in the social link stuff. Like, Yep. That. Chef's kiss. I'm glad you brought up Royal. So before we start, I want to make sure the people at home know the uh, story that we're talking about specifically is uh, Persona 5 proper, not Persona 5 Royal. And the reason for that is Persona 5 Strikers and Persona 5 Royal were in development at the same time. So the story beats of Royal aren't going to be reflected in Strikers. So, so uh, yeah. Not <laughs> technically canon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're only going to discuss like the good ending of Persona 5. Because there are multiple endings where they're kind of like, they're really cheap. Like the one where like you're accepting the contract and you can deny it and then the game ends like within the first two hours <laughs> <laughs> i think uh i think every any anybody that plays persona actually almost any at least the last two personas mm -hmm. 
Like, you know, you get that one and then you're like, wait, what happened? Why is the game over? I thought this game was long. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two hours done. <laughs> Speed run. <laughs> but let's get the conversation started. So game opens. You're in this giant casino. You have no idea why. You're playing as the protagonist Joker. And you're trying to escape the casino with some sort of treasure. You don't, you don't know what really is happening yet, but you're in what I think is a very well-constructed uh, tutorial. Like this, um, this intro is maybe like 10, 15 minutes long. But in that 10, 15 minutes, you learn a lot about the battle system and how the metaverse works. How'd you think and, about it? Uh, and if, if you, if you're not comfortable with like, it's, it's not hard platforming, mm-hmm. but they also give you like a good, uh, uh, good details on how to get around the, uh, uh, get around the dungeons, like on foot, like without the uh, fighting is screwing them, like maybe like one mechanic. Mm-hmm. So uh yeah like it's it's a very good uh very good uh tutorial level and like you know if you're just really story oriented too like it's just interesting like wait what's going on like why are we already in the thick of it like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah that was that was crazy and so for the people that have not played Persona you learn that uh right after this quick tutorial you break out of the casino, and then Joker, your character, gets arrested. And then you learn that the entire story is actually being told while you're being interrogated by one of the police officers. Well, the DA, to be specific. Uh, Sai Nijam- Nijami? Najima? Najima, yeah. Yeah. So they we, pull... We'll put some of these names. Yeah. <laughs> Sai, N- <laughs> Sai Nijima. <laughs> So yeah, you're being interrogated the whole game, and this is you uh, retelling everything that happened up to that casino point. So the story starts, you had the first day of school, and the reason why, okay, actually, let's touch on this because we're going to need to touch on this. The reason why your protagonist, Joker, is at a new school is because he stopped a woman from being basically raped. Yeah, like a drunk guy? Yeah. Uh, was a... Uh... Pretty uh, just paws all on him, and he decided to be a good citizen mm-hmm. and try to stop it. The guy uh barely, barely tripped and fell, mm-hmm. and uh had Joker arrested. Mm-hmm. Or uh, yeah, had the prota- uh, protagonist arrested, and um, he wound up getting an assault charge of being put on probation. Mm-hmm. And uh, his parents decided to send him to a friend of the family to uh, wound up uh, taking him into another school. Yep. So he moves in with uh, Sajiro, who is a very important character in the story. He owns a coffee shop, and you live in the uh, the attic of the coffee shop, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Yeah. <laughs> first day of school. <laughs> first day of school, you look down and you realize there's a weird app on your phone. That app trans uh, transfer you to some weird dimension called the metaverse, and you the school disappears. The school turns into a castle. And you'll find out later that the castles are actually the dungeons, for lack of a better term, in this RPG. And the palaces. And, uh, yep. They all wind up, uh, most of your dungeons are like for, uh, your dungeons are for, uh, you know, the, your bosses that you're taking on. Mm-hmm. And like those dungeons kind of reflect their inner thoughts of their surroundings. So like whatever they feel like uh their most comfortable areas or the place where they are uh, they spend the most time like it converts into uh something distorted of what it used to be mm-hmm. or what it's supposed to be and uh it's very very interesting because you really get to jump into like the psyches of the uh people that you're pursuing in this game and it's very very interesting and like very very colorful mm-hmm uh, if you've played uh, other personas, uh, this persona by far is maybe like one of the most uh, vibrant color wise mm-hmm. compared to the other ones. So, yep. So you go in here and you find out that the palace belongs to the uh, now volleyball uh, coach, uh, Kamashita. And Kamashita is like a despicable dude. He's beating his volleyball players, he's like molesting the girls at a school. And doing a whole lot of like 
political nonsense to tr- run the school from behind. Right. But now. but the school is kind of backing him because on the outside of all that, he looks like an upstanding uh upstanding person. He's an ex Olympian. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he uh when he came to the school, I do believe like he led their volleyball team to a championship. Like uh, I, I'm not sure how far into his career uh coaching career he did it, but he did do it, and that's why like they kind of turn the blind eye because most of the adults know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like a lot, even the parents, even the parents of the kids know what's happening, but they just want to be a part of this like Kamashita experience that even if their kids go and cry to them, they don't care, which is in <laughs> the old uh, Gritcher, Teeth, and Barrett. Right. It's for the greater good in the long run uh, scenario, which uh, doesn't pay off in the long run. Mm hmm. So you get into the palace and you realize you're not the only person who has this mysterious app and who has gotten into uh, Kamashita's palace. There is, well, first you run into Morgana the cat. The trans cat? Is this is Morgana trans? No. Like, no. He's, he's just not a person. Yeah, he's just... Uh, has no gender. Yeah, he's just not a person. person. <laughs> like, uh, ooh, we, we can get a little bit deeper into that. Yeah. Later on, because that's kind of a a big thing eventually. That is a big plot point. So we'll get to that later. But Morgana, the cat, which is basically like this uh, Morgan Freeman-esque character in the sense that um, Morgana is going to basically be the tutorial plot point for the rest of the story. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what you are supposed to do. He basically explains all the new mechanics and stuff as you need it. Your uh, expose man. Yeah, man. In the, uh, <laughs> in the, uh, the other world. Mm-hmm. So you meet Morgana, join your crew. You'll also run into Ryuji, which is another classmate at your high school who had the app and accidentally got transported into the metaverse. Now, Ryuji, so everybody, every Phantom Thief is interesting in their own right. And this is kind of where I learned that, like, Atlas really knows whoever writes the stories for Atlas. Like, they really kind of, like, know how to write, like, a human story. But also still have that anime-esque over-exaggeration. Like, uh, the amount of time that uh, you're spending with these characters, like, they they definitely had to sit back and say, hey, we have to make interesting characters. We have to make characters that you want to spend time with because spending time with those characters actually uh, I reward you in the long run when you go into dungeons, especially the main characters as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, like uh, Ryuji is uh, one of the first people you meet, which uh, everybody kind of tells you to stay away from them mm-hmm. because Ryuji is a delinquent, even though everybody also knows that you're on probation. And uh, so, like, he's your first uh, misfit that you collect. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you brought up the fact that you, you uh, get the chance to, like, ch- pick and choose who you're hanging out with. And as you hang out with them, you learn more of that specific character's story beats. Because, let's say, because I, in the two times that I played through Persona 5, I've always got Ryuji up to 10. But if you choose not to ever go hang out with Ryuji, you'll always know Ryuji as like the surface value. He's just an annoying, loud, cursing teenager. Like, uh, I think, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I felt like it was kind of a chore to get him to 10. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he's, he's not a bad guy, but he's like not my, not my first pick of people that I, you know, like I would hang out with. And I, I really like, uh, when I when I play these games, like I always play these games. The first time I play it the way I would play it if I was the actual main character, mm-hmm. and like so, like sometimes I miss stuff because I'm like, yeah, I'm playing, I'm playing it for, I'm playing it for uh, me this time. Next time's for the lore, and you know, the other time is like completionist stuff. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do the same. I get immersed and I kind of like make real world decisions based on what's happening and. Stuff like that. I mean, aside from, I also get a little selfish. Like, 
I only get the people up to 10 that I know I'm going to want to fight with, like, in the end game. Yeah. Yeah. So and, I... Uh, <laughs> that, that was another big thing about it, too. And that was kind of... I was like, do I need this guy? Mm-hmm. Am I going to need him in the long run? Mm-hmm. And, like, my first initial thoughts was, like... Not an, not initial. Like, I, I, I did get to know him a decent amount first. And, like, my first kind of thoughts were just kind of, like... I don't want to need this guy. <laughs> but he's not a bad guy. Though. Right. No, 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 no. He's no. just not like... <laughs> I would... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back to Kamashita's Palace. We pick up Ryuji. And we finally pick up uh, An... An... I'm not even going to try well, yeah, to say it last we, we didn't... You yeah, know, honest. <laughs> but uh, we, we did forget that go. We actually meet on before we meet Ryuji. You're right. But I think on joins the party after. Yeah, yeah. She but you are correct. Yeah. Because um uh, on your way to school the first day, like you wind up uh it starts raining and you wind up uh chilling out under uh an awning to get out of the rain and mm-hmm. you uh you wind up being right next to Ani. You get to speak for for uh two or four minutes before she gets into Kamashido's car. Mm-hmm. And uh, takes her to school. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I'm glad, God, I'm glad you brought that up. Because just like how Ryuji on the surface level is this annoying, uh, boisterous teenager, An comes off, if you don't get to know her, she, she looks like the the thought, for lack of a better term. The high school, I'm dating Kamashita because he's older and I want to like be seen with somebody of power. But you learn that she is only hanging with Kamashita to keep one of her friends safe. I forget her and, name. Uh, uh, Shio. <laughs> yes, Shio. And it's not until Shio tries to kill herself where An finally gets the bravery to to fight Kamashita. And uh, again, like she, uh, she is the uh, fourth uh, fourth member of your team. Which, uh, like I said, like a, like like you said, like if you don't get to know her right away, like yeah, she comes off as like you mm-hmm. know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in this for status. I'm, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm better. I look better than everybody else. Therefore, I am better than everybody else. And that's, and like when you actually get to know her, like that's not her at all. Like mm-hmm. Her story is, uh, she, she's one of the first people that I got to uh, attend, mm-hmm. and like not even like for romantic reasons. I had no intentions on her being like. The one I was just like, I just actually like her character. I wanted to help her on her journey, <laughs> and like she actually had like a really, really good character uh, arc. Mm-hmm. Like once you go through like her whole uh, social status, status. Yeah. So, so all of you uh, throughout this first palace, you wind up unlocking your persona, which is basically in order to. Gives give some sort of equivalence to personas in Persona Five are the equivalent to say Pokemon in Pokemon, or if uh, if you're a JoJo's fans, they're like stands and JoJo's. Yes, but uh, yeah, like they uh they hold all your power and uh, attributes and uh uh are, are we talk well yeah like the and the main character normally has the ability to switch personas. Yes. So your person Joker can hold multiple persona, which will come in, which will be an important story point later, right? Yep. So <laughs> all of you get your powers. You become the the Phantom Thieves. Um, you defeat Kamashita, which then so defeating Kamashita, when you defeat these evil shadow versions of these adults in the in their palace, it makes their real world selves reflect on the bad things that they have done. Which um um when you uh they, there's a whole uh process to defeating like uh their shadow selves to making them confess their which makes them confess their crimes like you uh just said uh mm-hmm. in the real world which uh it takes the form of a heist. Mm-hmm. So like all these castles that you're going into you're going uh you're going in and you're trying to steal the person's treasure, which is some uh, something phys- something physical that's important to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kamoshida's being a, 
uh, wound up being his uh, gold medals that he won in uh, the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of your dungeon trip is you getting to the treasure room and like kind of plotting your course there. And uh, once you plot your course there, you and your you and the rest of the thieves kind of sit down and say, all right, this is how we're going to go about stealing it. And it never 100% goes right and you have to fight somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's another part of uh, the game design of Persona 5 that feels so good. Because when you're first going through the palace, like you're really drudging, like you're fighting every couple of steps. And you kind of like are going the wrong way at first. But then by the time you are close to that boss fight, you really feel like you feel like you have became more powerful by the time that yeah. boss fight came. And not, not only that, too, like you like by the time like it's time to do the actual boss fight, you know, that dungeon in, in and out. Like mm -hmm. you, you can weave around all of the bad guys like you don't have to fight anything if you don't want to. Yep. <laughs> like you're really chasing the joint. Mm -hmm. like <laughs> yeah. And that was just brilliant, man. And um, you know, like once um one of the uh other cool things is like uh you have to do some real world stuff too to prep for the um to prep for your heist. You actually um uh, their big thing is they leave calling cards uh someplace uh most of the time they're supposed to be specifically for the uh their targets. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes they leave them out for everybody to see because like the more people that sees, the more uh the more the pressure is uh the pressure is on in the actual dungeon. Mm -hmm. And um once you leave that calling car, like yeah, all hell breaks loose in the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like an uh the boss, the final boss version of these uh evil adults it's kind of i know a lot of people who haven't played it's going to get a little eye rolly because it seems like each adult uh represents one of the like seven sins like kamashita's lust yeah and his guy is like some big tongue hanging out demon and he has like a bikini version of on next to him and like it's a very um from a surface level obvious but it's still very well executed. So uh, just just like real quick, just to kind of mm -hmm. go on a small tangent, Atlas mm -hmm. is really good at uh, making these uh, bosses that are, you know, like represent certain things. Like they, they've been doing this with Persona for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same deal with uh, Catherine as well, all mm -hmm. the bosses in that are. Uh, like the personifications of different uh sins and stuff like that. And um yeah, like each each one of these uh bosses that you wind up fighting is like unique. They they fit with the style of the dungeon. They they totally uh personify like the bad things that these people have done. <laughs> <laughs> and um there's always something unique in the boss fight besides, you know, swing here hit weak point here mm -hmm. there's always something a little bit extra to each one of those boss fights which uh what was the kamashita one are we uh, gonna tell them now i'm trying to figure think. it out for themselves i think he's the one like he has a crown on his head and you have to get one of your party members to sneak up and hit the crown off his head is that I think, yeah i think i think yeah that, that sounds right mm-hmm I, I, I just remember Ryuji hanging, and I'm like, hurry yep. up, Ryuji. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Get up there, bro. Who are you taking to? <laughs> but yeah, man, each boss. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And I'm just, just like you were saying, too, like he has like a, a bikini on that's mm -hmm. with him, and like she, uh, she pops up in the fight, too. Like That is actually very important. We should uh, touch on that, is that cognitive versions of real world people can exist in these palaces and basically they are not the real person they're just how the person whose palace you're in sees that person and uh best best believe we will be saying the word cognitive a lot <laughs> in, this, in, this, in these two videos Oof. like i'm really i'm dreading the really big plot twist because I've really been like practicing how to explain that to somebody that has not played the game. Like the plot twist in the uh you'll you'll we'll yeah. get there. <laughs> but 
<laughs> but you defeat Kamashita. He uh, admits to his crimes in the real world. And that draws a lot of attention to the school and the Phantom Thieves specifically. So you get um, on the radar are two big law enforcement people, Sai Najima, the uh, district attorney, and detective prodigy uh, Akechi. Who is uh, about your age. He's like a, mm-hmm. a child uh, a prodigy, child prodigy detective, mm-hmm. which... Uh, I know, again, Persona fans will be like, uh, that play the other games like, oh, another uh, detective <laughs> prince, huh? Another one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, Akechi comes off at first uh, very like vanilla, I'm all about my business, but so I, correct me if I'm wrong, Persona 5, you cannot get to know Akechi, but in Persona 5 Royal, you can actually go out and hang with Akechi just like the rest of the fan of Thieves and learn about Akechi. I believe so. Yeah, Royal, I know, I know Rim Royal, yeah, like yeah. you can uh, hang out with him and get his uh, social link up. Mm-hmm. And regular Persona 5, I, I do think you can hang out with him. I just don't okay. think it's as extensive. I think, I don't, I don't think you could get him all the way up to like social link 10. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. But like, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent. Like, so uh, again, you know, in the comments, if y'all know, so. <laughs> definitely drop them in the comments, <laughs> man. Berate us or thank us, whatever. Because I've, like I said, I've googled before. Because at first, my intent was to kind of like try to summarize this in five or so minutes. And there's so much of that out there, and I just don't think five minutes does this story justice. Yeah, like it, it like. This this by far like so I played the I played the big personas mm-hmm. like four and uh four and three and uh the story for this one is so well thought out planned and executed like it definitely it deserves it deserves the time like so like yeah we're 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 giving it the yeah time. <laughs> <laughs> so remember Akechi and remember Sai. Uh, Nijima because they will come back and they're very important to the story. Well, um, well you know, we actually meet Sai. We already met Sai. Technically, yes, technically in the interrogation room. room. <laughs> it's like uh, each each one of these uh, so each kind of caper you go on Um, it starts off with Sai kind of saying like, alright, so this was your target. Tell me what happened with it. And then like you gotta go through the uh, you go through the events. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, something we forgot to touch on, uh, during Kamashita's uh, palace, the first time you go to sleep, you get introduced to the Velvet Room, which is very important. So, yeah, uh, and the, uh, so like the, the Velvet Room, again, uh, always takes the, uh, takes a, it, it considers your cognition and like, it is, uh, uh, what's the best way to say it? Um, they shape it to the situation that you're the main character's in. Mm-hmm. So, like this velvet room is actually a prison cell for your, uh, for your protagonist. And um, the warden is this guy called Igor, who is just normally your, uh, uh the guy that kind of like tells you how you're progressing through the game and everything. And then you have two, uh. You have two COs, <laughs> yeah, <but. laughs> that uh, you are constantly interacting with when you uh, whenever you enter the velvet room and mm. eventually wind up coming out of the velvet room. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, in this game, the velvet room serves a actual gameplay uh, purpose because that's where you go to actually uh, customize your persona, uh, get new ones, infuse the ones you have to create new ones, and like uh, all the uh animations and stuff like that for uh uh um combining personas mm-hmm. and then uh using them for items and stuff like that are all like prison uh prison themes so mm-hmm. like literally like literally like yo like i don't really need this persona here but like this persona like if i uh do this or that with it it'll give me like a cool item like they they will literally put it in the gu- uh, guillotine for mm-hmm. you <laughs> <laughs> And uh, like like I said, they they the attention to detail and some of the stuff they do in this game is like really 
really, really vibrant. They really just keep stepping it up every persona that they do. Mm-hmm. So back in the real world, we uh, the Phantom Thieves feel really good about their uh, victory over Kamishita, and they want to continue to better the world. So they're looking for their next target. Their next target winds up being an artist named Madorame, who I forgot why they assumed he was evil at first. But as they get to know him, they find out that he has been uh, using interns to create art and taking credit for it. So uh, I think I actually think the Matarame thing was. Uh... So we skipped over something that I think. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think actually uh, w- went to the Matarame Matarame thing. Sure. So waters like big dungeons, mm-hmm. or <sighs> waters like the. Uh, character oriented dungeons. You're correct. There is a huge dungeon that's built up of the world's uh cognition called Mementos. Mm-hmm. And uh in Mementos, it's just this uh uh it's just this subway that's just r- winding down and down and down and down and down. Mm-hmm. And uh the more and more you go through the game and the more and more the phantom fees get popular, the more of it opens up. And uh while in there, you could do side missions and stuff like that for uh, random people. And I do believe one of the side missions actually gives you uh, the name of Matarame because it was somebody that I think it was like a homeless person on the street that was just like, yeah, I used to be an artist. And then like this guy uh, took my art, used me up and kicked me out. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're correct. I actually have that in my notes. I can't believe I skipped that because Mementos is actually very important as well Yeah. Uh, to the story later. So yeah. Uh, you, you explained it pretty uh, pretty well. Mementos is just like the collection of everybody in Tokyo. Like it's all of their cognition. If they're not like evil enough to have their own palace, they, it all gets fed into this one big world, Mementos. We need like a little cognition. <laughs> bing, <Something>. bing. <laughs> <laughs> what up? <laughs> So we uh, find out about Madarame. We need an end to get to Madarame. That's when we are introduced to Yusuke. Well, uh, yeah, you uh, Yusuke is uh, Madarame's a uh, uh, living uh, apprentice, mm-hmm. but uh, he also had a very close connection with uh, Yusuke's uh, mother, who uh, passed away, mm-hmm. and uh, Yusuke is also uh, very. Uh, uh, he cares a whole lot about Matarame and his art because uh, Matarame made one of his mo- uh, made a painting that inspired Yus- uh, Yusuke to be a uh, artist. Well, it's his inspiration as an artist, mm-hmm. which is uh, it's called uh, Mayuri. Yes. Yeah, it's called Mayuri. Mm-hmm. And uh, that painting was re- is really important to Yusuke. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I forgot how you initially met Yusuke. Uh, Yusuke, you meet him, I believe, at a Madarame art show, and he sees Ain, because I have that in my notes, Yusuke's relationship with Ain. He sees Ain, and he wants to paint her. <laughs> right? Yes, so, he does. Yeah, so, and, so we get, we're, <laughs> uh, we're laughing because Yusuke have, and Ain have this very weird relationship for the first a uh, couple of hours until they both get to know each other, but Yusuke wants to paint on nude, and An assumes that like Yusuke is trying to, because again we only know surface level On right now, and An thinks Yusuke is trying to get in my pants, and Yusuke's like, nah, I just really just want to paint you, man. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, like uh, is is maybe one of the weirdest. Like- <laughs> <laughs> Like you, I mean, like you would want to paint on you too. Like, like <laughs> <Lisa's not> a... <laughs> but like, yeah, like he he legitimately wants to do it like for the art, mm-hmm. for his art. Mm-hmm. And, so, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it it creates this very uh comedic and dynamic back and forth between them for at least the entirety of this palace. But uh, to push forward a little bit. Um, Yusuke develops the app just like all the rest of the Phantom Thieves so he can jump into the metaverse as well in there he finds out that Madarame did not paint Mayuri 
he took it from Yusuke's mom, which would explain why Yusuke loves it so much. Like, uh, not not only that, but like he was uh, uh, partly responsible for uh, Yusuke's mother's death, mm-hmm. which um, I, I think it was um, she was having a seizure and he just didn't help her. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, what Mayuri was a self portrait, right? Yes, she painted herself. I think while she was pregnant with Yusuke. Right after she had Yusuke, you're correct. Because uh, Madarame altered the painting because Mayuri, like everybody, was wondering about what is Mayuri looking at, mm-hmm. and um, the part that uh, Madarame actually uh, altered was Mayuri was actually looking at Yusuke, mm-hmm. like he was actually she was holding him as a baby, mm-hmm. and uh, you know to learn that you know like that sent Yusuke into a rage. Yes. Which uh very much justified. <laughs> <laughs> so the rage, which is a good word, because it's that moment of frustration with the real world and how you have been living. That's how the thieves uh, discover their persona. It's the whole being tired of like going through the motions of the real world. And when well, they finally break, the man. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when they finally break, that's when that persona comes. And Yusuke discovers his persona. He becomes a fan of Thieve. And they defeat uh, Madarame. But this is going to be the first time that we are introduced with the Black Mask Thief. The uh, thief that breaks into Madarame's palace after we have already defeated him and kills him. Does Madarami die? No. But he does something. He de- he sneaks into the palace after we have left and does something to Madarami. And I don't remember I what. I think he was there the whole time, right? Yeah. Oh, you're him. right. Madarami references him. Yeah. I, I think, um, oh, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. He mm-hmm. does. He, uh, Madarami brings him up. Yes. Because, uh, Oh, because man. he assumes okay, that it's, it's a little bit further on. Like I, when, when we get there, because we'll, mm-hmm. I, 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 I remember where we first interact with him. Yes, but yeah, but Madarame, um, as we are convincing him to turn, he confuses us with another uh, thief that has a black mask, and though the main characters have no idea what he's talking about, but keep that in mind. That is very important. Okay, Madarame is defeated. He admits his guilt. Uh, Yusuke gets to uh, retrieve Mayuri. Uh, yeah, because uh, Mario Mayuri wound up being uh, uh, Kanashiro's. Uh, my bad, not Kanashiro. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're getting Madarame. ahead. Madarame's uh... <laughs> Madarame's uh, treasure. Yes, and uh, and uh, yeah, we uh, continue on garner more. Uh, popularity is phantom thieves that is correct (laughs) so the phantom thieves are getting very cocky at this point the good guys they're like we defeated two people already why not just go ahead and go after like an actual criminal criminal and we're and there's some like infighting about whether they should do it or not they settle on kanashira who is an actual like mobster bad guy yeah, like these guys. Yeah. Selling drugs to the community through <laughs> children. Mm-hmm. Through children. Tricking them into, uh, tricking them into uh, delivering stuff uh, for them. Mm-hmm. And then when uh, when they don't want to do it anymore, they're like, oh, well, well, I got info on you. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you work for me. I own you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless you uh, want your family to wind up uh, finding out that you're a drug dealer or something. Or stuff <laughs> like that. Also, on the uh, flip side of that as well, uh, the school is thinking about, uh, is wondering, like, what's going on with uh, the Phantom Thieves and they're kind of, certain people that are investigating kind of narrowed it down to, like, they might be kids from this school. And the student council president is brought in to actually try to uh, investigate to talk to the student body to see if they can, if she can figure out uh, who the Phantom Thieves are, which uh, she does mm-hmm. <laughs> immediately, <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's all Ryuji's fault if you didn't know. Yes, Ryuji is a big loudmouth. 
<laughs> which is a, a common theme throughout the game. It's uh, Ryuji can't shut his mouth. He's and, like, did y'all know where the Phantom is? <laughs> Nobody listens to me. Except <laughs> the one person that did. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the studio bond president, uh, Makoto, finds out that the group of good guys are the Phantom Thieves. They find out about their scheme to try to take down Kaneshiro, and she wants to help, but she doesn't really... Her means aren't really the best. Makoto's uh, one character flaw, because as you notice, all the Phantom Thieves have some sort of character flaw. Makoto overthinks. And her way of doing it was to be a, like a cell and try to get Kaneshiro to pressure her into selling the drugs. But she actually... Lots of planning all. Exactly. All <laughs> <laughs> she gets into Kaneshiro's uh, lair with the rest of the Phantom Thieves. Kaneshiro finds out they're all kids, takes a picture of them, and threatens to leak the picture. So now you have to get into Kaneshiro's palace and take him down before the picture gets leaked. Which uh, I, I'll say, uh, we were we were talking about like favorite uh, dungeons uh, earlier, mm-hmm. and uh, this one's not quite my favorite. It was it was my favorite boss, mm-hmm. but uh, um, his dungeon is a bank. Yes. <laughs> And the bank is a flying saucer (laughs) 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 that you have to try to figure out how to get into (laughs) uh, from the ground, which Mm -hmm. uh, by by far, this guy was very full of himself because his cognition kind of turned up. What what was the area? Was it like Shibuya? Did they say it was? No, it wasn't Shibuya. It was one of, I can't remember which uh, Shingu, uh, Shinjuku, mm-hmm. that's what it was. Uh, it pretty much turned all of Shinjuku into his area. And mm-hmm. like the people walk around as ATM machines. He looked at people as ATM machines. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, further himself and get richer. And like that, that was, uh, I remember that was one of the dungeons that stuck out the most to me. Mm-hmm. Wasn't my favorite, but it was the one that stuck out like the most to me. And I was like, this, this is wild. <laughs> yeah, from a from a design standpoint, that one really did stand out amongst the rest of them. There might be a little bit of pad in that one. Like there's a lot of like it feels like they tried to like stretch that one a little bit, especially with like the vault area where you kind of got to puzzle your way through the maze. Yeah, you know, yeah, I could I could see that. Mm. But I didn't I hate see, it. I yeah. <laughs> like uh oh man, like uh puzzles or uh mm. Puzzle dungeons, like I'm like, oh, <laughs> I just want to fight. Come on, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> all my brain power on these, uh, <laughs> on these battles. Like, don't, don't make me puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it, it wasn't terrible. It, it wasn't mm-hmm. terrible. No, it wasn't. It's like I think most of them were like go from point A to point B, mm-hmm. retrieve, uh, uh, retrieve such and such, come back to point A and put in the thing that you retrieved, Mm -hmm. which uh, I am super dumbing it down, but (laughs) it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't bad. Yeah. So fast forward, Makoto finds out, finds out she has a persona. She unleashes it. She becomes a phantom thief. You defeat Kamashita. You free all the kids from his grip. But because Kamashita is such a big figure, now the light is really shining on the phantom thieves. Like they are, and they're kind of right. They're riding high off of it too. Yes. So, and <clears throat> the funny thing is, like they're trying to figure out from there where do they go from there with their next target, and uh, they don't have to worry about it because their next target actually winds up coming to them. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, their next target winds up being a a hacker, a hacker group. Mm-hmm. Call uh, Medjed, mm-hmm. and uh, they kind of announced like, "Yo, the like, you know, the Phantom Thieves." Like, they they literally tell Tokyo, "Like, yo, we're gonna shut you get down. We're gonna mess up your bank information, all uh, and all this stuff if the Phantom Thieves don't reveal themselves right away." And like, you're like, <laughs> "Oh, 
<laughs> right, so I guess we're going after Medjid, and uh, you want to explain the, the twist of that? Yes. So um, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Majed winds up being, uh, remember we brought up in the beginning that you live with a family friend, Sajiro, who runs a coffee shop. Majed winds up being his adopted daughter, Futaba. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> you'll, you'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But, <laughs> but Futaba is a, is a shut-in. And you find out later that she shut herself off from the world because her mother died and she feels guilty for the death. But the reason why Futaba wants the attention of the Phantom Thieves is because she heard that they can change people's cognition thing. And (laughs) she wants them to change her own cognition. So now the Phantom Thieves have to go into Futaba's own palace and fight off her demons. Which, um, uh, Futaba, um, first of all, she's one of the funniest people you wind up Absolutely. Like the uh, <laughs> beginning interactions with her are like mm. hilarious. <laughs> uh, the, there's like a small cutscene you get when you actually um, bump into it the first time. Some of the funniest, you scared the hell out of me faces I've seen <laughs> like ever. <laughs> but um, again, uh, yeah, like she she's really guilt ridden to the point that it, you know makes her shut in and um. Uh, Sergio, who's uh, taking care of you, is extremely protective of her, like, mm-hmm. because he was close with her mother, and when her mother passed, you know, he was like, I'll take her in. Mm-hmm. Um, if I, actually, he didn't take her in right away, I think. I think uh, she was staying with a family. Yes. And, like, she hated it with family, and the family didn't really want her around either, so Sergio took her in. Mm-hmm. And, um, like I said, she just wants to change her heart so she could be a better person and she can figure out what exactly happened to her mother because adult the uh, adults around her actually tried to make it seem like it was her fault. Mm-hmm. And uh, she believed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, like, um, honestly, like, um, her dungeon was like one of the, it was really one of the, it was a sadder dungeon, which makes sense because like you're going through a dungeon of somebody that's actually going to wind up being uh a member of the group mm-hmm. so uh um i'm trying to remember like how i felt about her actual dungeon and I, uh i thought it was cool it definitely was a cool design so her her dungeon herself oh, yeah. Yeah, is a pyramid sounds great. sounds great yeah um she had this uh Egyptian tomb mm-hmm. uh, design and like which you know fit her character because like she was trying to shut herself in mm-hmm. so like it, it fit it fit great for her character and like even though it was a tomb it was very colorful and once you got to a certain part it got really uh, cyberpunky yes <laughs> <laughs> which uh, I never thought I would say Egyptian tomb and cyberpunky together <laughs> Like the, these persona writers are genius. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and whoever drew it as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, like um, so uh, we wind up uh, we wind up uh, defeating her demons, stealing a treasure, mm-hmm. and uh, you get one of the coolest escape scenes uh from that dungeon as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we get out of it. Um, she actually takes care of the Medjet problem for us. <laughs> uh, she was a founding member of Medjet and she had quit it. And she was just like, oh yeah, there's no, it's no big deal. I can figure out who. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. who's doing this immediately. And she nipped it in the bud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Futaba is an interesting character because you never play as Futaba. Futaba is really kind of like, she deals out buffs and debuffs during your battles on her own. You don't even really control her. And uh, she uh, also is like the one that is now your expose man. Mm-hmm. Like she, she's the one she can scan dungeons for you at a time. She can scan enemies as well to tell you weaknesses so you don't have to waste a, waste your time going through like, is it fire? Is it thunder? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh like she she winds up uh becoming very, very, very important to uh to your group, which uh kind of takes uh well, I I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on that. Mm-hmm. And we cuz we are I'm, we're going to talk about that in the in the next dungeon anyway. So <laughs> Yeah. So, I'm so while we're on the topic of Ataba, Sajiro is another character who I've maxed out as far as relationship. And it's through Sajiro's side relationship you find out a lot more about Futaba and Sajiro's relationship with each other. So, did you max out Sajiro? Very close. Okay. No, you you know what? Yeah, yes, I did. I yeah. did max it out. So you you, max out. you find out that uh, Futaba's uncle is like bribing him and like threatening yeah. to sue and stuff like that. And it's after you you technically defeat the uncle because I think you have to go into Memento. Yeah, he has a boss in Memento. Yeah, uh, the, I think the uncle was it the uncle and the mother or was it just the uncle? It, th- it was just the uncle. Yeah, yeah, he had, a, he had a boss in Mementos that you uh. Take care of a special request from a mm-hmm. from a fellow phantom thief. Yep. <laughs> so Futaba's <laughs> so uncle is trying to get Futaba back and threatening to sue Sajiro and stuff like that. Um, closer to the end of Sajiro's side quest stuff, you have to go to Memento to defeat the uncle. You come back and you find out that like Futaba and Sajiro like really love each other, and it's sweet. Yeah, like like pseudo. Father, she never had. For mm-hmm. him. Daughter, he always wanted. It, like they, they, they really, uh, they really play off each other really well. Which, by looking at him, you wouldn't think that's the case, right? <laughs> because the hero's like on the surface, he's like this, like cold, calculated man's man kind of dude. And Futaba is like a super nerd. I'm in the comic books. I'm in the computers. I just really don't want to talk to anybody. And both of their shells kind of like just crack open. And he, he was uh, some type of ex-investigator mm-hmm. or something like that. And he actually gave that up to open the coffee shop so he could take care of Futaba. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, like, they, ah, man. Like, <laughs> 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 they, they, they're so good together. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, on to the next palace, Okumura who is the uh, president of a uh, the biggest fast food chain in Tokyo, uh, Big Bang Burger. And he's, uh, I, I believe he's using his money to like bribe politicians or something like that, which gets our attention. He's treating his uh, workers bad and not paying. Correct. Them. Yeah, you're right. Like, so uh, like, and a lot of things, again, like we were saying before, like, um, when the the things that these people are doing uh you wind up uh seeing a lot of it in their dungeons and like one of the things you see in uh okamoro's dungeon is that like there's like uh broke you see robots working on assembly line tirelessly and then like they'll break down and somehow just sweep it up and replace it and keep it moving Mm -hmm. and like anybody that like has ever worked like a regular nine to five like when you look at this dungeon you'll be like yeah you're gonna get mad. You're gonna get mad. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah, man. But, uh, so, um, um, one of the things that uh, um, that starts out uh, that you start out in this dungeon, they're not sure if they want to tackle this one or not, and um, we wind up having to do it because um. Morgana kind of has a falling out with the group mm-hmm. because uh, Morgana's feeling like he he's not a use anymore, especially like with Futaba there because mm-hmm. Futaba, like when you're not using Morgana in battle, Morgana pr- does the same things that uh, Futaba does. Like it gives you all the information on the dungeon and how far the treasure is from you and, and stuff like that. And like with Futaba there, he started kind of really doubting himself mm-hmm. and uh that kind of spurs him to like leave the group for a little bit mm-hmm. and uh during that you wind up uh he winds up actually recruiting uh your next uh phantom thief haru mm-hmm. who is uh okamura's daughter and uh uh you are we speed running it? 
Like, yeah, sort of. Yeah. So uh, okay. let's let's stop a little bit on uh, Morgana because you did bring up a good point. Uh, Morgana also her, his sub story is he does not believe he is a cat. Morgana believes something happened. He doesn't remember his, the entirety of his life. He just remember waking up as a cat. He believes he's he was a human, and he's trying to spend the whole game figuring out how to become a human again. And, and when uh, Ryuji, like, mm-hmm. oh, he thinks like uh, the mysteries to that are at the bottom of mementos. Mm-hmm. So that is like another uh, reason that you're actually trying to go further and further down in mementos is to help Morgana out. Yep. So we find out the real reason why he left was because he felt useless, but he blamed originally him leaving on Ryuji doubting that he was a human. Him and Ryuji get into a fight, and Ryuji calls him a cat and like says he's dumb and stuff like that. Which they uh, constantly do. Ryuji yes. and uh, Morgana are always going back and forth. <laughs> but yeah, you uh, through getting back with Morgana, you meet Haru, and you find out that she is forced to get engaged with a, a friend of her dad's. And the only reason why her dad wants her to marry this guy is to build a business partnership with this guy's father. Uh, poli- these political marriages. Yes. So now we have to defeat uh, Okumura before the wedding happens. That's the timer. I believe. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, like, you know, uh, again, like, um, once you uh, get through, uh, once you get through everything and, like, you wind up uh, defeating Okamura, which uh, I think is hilarious because they, you get a lot of, his dungeon is also, it's a space station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you get some uh, light Star Wars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, once you, uh, once you defeat him, um, we actually get to we talk about now the uh, the black mask uh, mm-hmm. person that is somebody that's also running through these dungeons and uh, just kind of creating havoc. The actual black mask uh, persona user mm-hmm. uh, this time actually kills Okamura uh, while we're leaving, mm-hmm. and uh, when, while we're waiting for Okamura's change of heart, uh, he actually winds up uh, dying. Yep. And uh, which, like, I, uh, when that originally happened, I was like, yeah, like, you know, Haru's cool. Like, I really like this person. Like, you know, I'm going to get to know Haru a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, then her dad died. I was like, oof. <laughs> <laughs> um, Because uh, especially, like, going back to the, uh, going back to, like, the, First, uh, at the beginning of the game, well, the where we started in the beginning of the game, uh, when you're initially arrested at the uh, beginning of the game, one of the things that they tell you off top is one of your own people turned on you, mm-hmm. and uh, for uh, that to happen to Haru's father, like that, it, and logically, it would make sense that it would be her, right? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> So like it uh it really kind of throwing throwing that in around there was like you know kind of the perfect timing for you to start thinking about that again like wait a minute like <laughs> because she's <laughs> sad be turning on me she's sad but she's not like as sad as you would think somebody who lost their father prematurely would be sad yeah and of course you find out later it's because her father was a dick but like she really is like oh, my father's dead. You want to go to Disney World? A person too. <laughs> yeah, she's a strong person, correct? Because uh, I think um, so. Like a, a lot of Phantom Thieves, you meet like younger and older, and she's one of the few that's older than you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she has you by like a year. Yeah, her and Makoto are the same age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. but uh, so- Akumara, Akumara dies, and because everybody knows the Phantom Thieves were working on changing Akumara's heart, the Phantom Thieves are blamed for Akumara's death. So now the DA, Sai Nijima, has everything she needs to try to, like, 
lead the charge against the Phantom Thieves. And uh, at the same time as well, uh, on the flip side, mm -hmm. uh, don't forget about our friend Akechi. Yes. Who was uh, investigating as well. He also uh, figured it out that uh, you guys are the Phantom Thieves as well. Mm -hmm. And um, which uh, actually leads you into your uh, next dungeon, ironically, mm -hmm. which is Sai's uh, dungeon mm -hmm. because uh, her cognition... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of distorted with the stress of uh being uh you know a top uh mm -hmm. top detective in a mm -hmm. in a uh, police force actually it was a police force or was she something higher than that uh i've been referring to her as like a district attorney i don't know if that's what they call her but that's she's a lawyer she's like a, and, uh, yeah i don't know yeah, what the japanese equivalent one, is one the, like, yeah, she's one of the top yeah Top uh, lawyers at that, and mm -hmm. uh, like a catchy like it's just like I'm pretty sure she has a dungeon, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we need to, I think we need to give her a, a give her a change of heart because uh, you know if we don't stop her, like she might wind up uh, convicting people for no good reason, and if we do it, uh, I'll let you guys off the hook, but you phantom thieves have to disband, mm -hmm. and uh, he gives you a. Uh, you know, he gives you ultimatum. Dis mm -hmm. um, do this, or I'll turn you in. And once you do do this, disband. Mm -hmm. Stop being fan Phantom Thieves. And uh, they uh, they uh, actually agree to it. But why did they agree to it? <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's what I'm, I wanted to touch on, is uh, you really, at this point, where you, you find out so much about Akechi that he knows about Sai's dungeon, that he also has a persona... And the Phantom Thieves really don't question any of that stuff that they learn. But I think that speaks to the hubris that they have now uh, gained, that the Phantom Thieves are just so in over their heads that they just don't, don't question these things anymore. Which they should have. They definitely should have because this would have saved them a lot of time <laughs> if they would have questioned the catchy. But we'll, we'll touch on that. Uh, we start getting to uh, Sai's palace and we then realize as the player holy shit this is the casino from the beginning of the game yep <laughs> <laughs> also mind you mind you this is hands down my favorite dungeon absolutely i love it yep you are <laughs> that, that is an objective fact this is the best dungeon in the game <laughs> but you get through the palace with a catchy as a playable character too he is on your team um, I don't think anything story-wise happens in the midst of the dungeon, but once you get to Sai and you defeat her, that's when you are now at the beginning of the game. You are Joker, and you're escaping the, the casino. You get arrested. And to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> Cliffhanger, curse me out in the comments. We're going to... <laughs> We need, to, we need to take a break. This is part one. Part two, we're going to start off at the present day when the interrogation loops back around. And that is a giant plot device that basically I've been referring to and I've been fearing getting to because it is a massive, difficult thing to explain. But we're going to do it. <laughs> we're going to do it. Come back tomorrow for part two of our Persona 5 recap. Uh, tune in later today. I will be streaming the first hour of Persona 5 Strikers. Uh, Hinokaga, do you want to promote anything? Um, I will also be streaming <laughs> Strikers at one point in time. I'm um, I'm going to wait uh, earlier, mm -hmm. earlier uh, this year. Uh, I did do Run Through Persona 4 Golden. Oh. And uh, I didn't beat it originally because same thing I did with Persona 5 I did before but uh I beat it so uh, actually check out uh check out my YouTube channel it's uh youtube.com slash Hinokaga and uh you can see the full Persona 4 playthrough uh, <laughs> on there <laughs> um and I will be doing a full playthrough again on 5 and I'm gonna try to attempt to uh 100% all of my social links this time around. Noise. Uh, once it comes out on uh, 
once Persona 5 comes out on PC, mm-hmm. which is uh, soonish. So, like, once I do that, once we get through 5 again, I'll be streaming Strikers too. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. So, yeah, stay tuned. Part 2 coming up. Striker stream coming soon. Uh, stay cool, everybody, man. All right. Peace.